So I'm out here testing uh, the entry level uh, Trek bike known as the Marlin. The Marlin has four different models. It starts with Marlin 4, which is what I'm test riding today. And then you got the Marlin 5, Marlin 6, and Marlin 7. The Marlin 4 retails at $499 as of this video. And the Trek Marlin 7, the highest model that they have, is $849. The reason I have the Trek Marlin 4 is due to availability with the pandemic that we've had uh, this year in 2020. Um, I kind of, I wanted a bike for my wife specifically uh, for her to just kind of enjoy some trails with me and my son. This is an entry level uh, getting her on the trails. I know the mountain biking community can be very, um, can be very harsh at times with, uh, if you're not riding a name brand three, $4,000 bike, you can really get um, shunned in a lot of environments and I'm hoping to really kind of get people out of that mindset and just getting people on the trails and having fun. That's always been my, my goal and that's how it was when I started and I hope to continue to uh, share that mindset in the future with future riders and young riders who are following up behind us. The Trek Marlin 4 is really it's a great bike as a gateway into trail riding. It does not have a lot of the major or nicer components like the five, six, and seven. I'll get into that here in a moment. But it's ideal for new riders who want a mountain bike uh, who can kind of double as kind of like a commuter. Maybe you live on campus or uh, just want something to ride around town. This is a good bike to kind of accommodate both of those features. The Trek Marlin 4 and 5 both have 21 speeds. 3x7 uh, is what they have. Once you get into the Trek Marlin 6, you now convert to a 2x8. All right, so the Trek Marlin 4 is actually the only Marlin bike that has the mechanical disc brakes. Both the 5, 6, and 7 all have the hydraulic disc brakes, which I think is, is worth the extra money. It is a much nicer feature, better way to modulate uh, your, your brakes, and just hydraulic is known to be a, a superior brake system. They are 720 millimeter width handlebars, so the handlebars uh, come the same on all the bikes. Um, this is not a stock seat. This is a seat that my wife wanted to switch over uh, for her comfort. And if you guys have seen my GT Aggressor video, I talked a lot about mindset of having an entry level bike to fit your budget and not to overspend. Uh, yes, you can spend more money and have a higher quality bike, uh, but I never, I'm never going to be an advocate to overspend outside your budget, put yourself into debt, or go into payments if. If you need payments, you probably can't afford the bike, but you can handle a lot of trail with these entry level bikes. And a lot of them have great room for upgrading and switching out parts uh, in the future. If that's something you wanna do, if you wanna get some extra money, you know, upgrade a part here and there. I will always uh, switch out grips and pedals. That is always something that I'm gonna do because that is just a comfort level for me. I wanna make sure my feet stay on the pedals. There are grips that I like that just feel comfortable to me. And honestly, I'm most likely switching out the handlebars and the stem as well. And people are like, oh, well, it's not a stock bike after that. I mean, honestly, the frame is what the Trek Marlin is. The frame is gonna be the same on all the bikes. Um, there might be a few variances if you get like an extra small uh, or small versus the medium, medium, large, or large, etc. They do also have uh, women specific Marlins once you get past the four. So the five, six, and seven have women specific uh, models for the Marlin. The bike that I am riding that I got for my wife is a medium large. I am 5'11", my wife I believe is 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and um, it feels a little small to me just because I'm used to riding a bigger bike, um, but I think it feels, it fits her great. This is the medium large. And one thing I really liked about the Trek Marlin and why I wanted to get her my wife this bike versus the GT Aggressor that I had is the 29 inch wheels. I really like 29ers for beginners who are getting into trail riding because it's much easier to handle roots and just kind of the rollover ability with the larger wheels. Uh, it's a little bit easier to get up climbs as well just because uh, each pedal stroke is gonna give you a little bit more just because of the larger wheels on the bike, making it easier for her to get out here and not uh, struggle so much. However, I did want uh, to get her the Trek Marlin 6 
and just kind of go into some of these comparisons like I mentioned before. The Trek Marlin SX, you know, would have uh, the hydraulic brakes, it'd have a different drivetrain system, it'd be the 2x8 or uh, drivetrain, uh, just to give her a little bit more range, just because this does tend to get hard to pedal up some of the steeper climbs, just because you don't have the range uh, in the gears. So these are the Bontrager, is that how you pronounce it? Bontrager Connection uh, rims. They all have, uh, these are all the Bontrager's uh, rims on all the, the Marlin versions. However, on the, the largest one, the uh, Trek Marlin 7, is the only one that does not have a Schrader valve. The 4, 5, and 6 all use Schrader valves. So all the Marlin versions are the 5 by 100 millimeter quick release. The Trek Marlin 4 and Trek Marlin 5 had the same SR Suntour XCE 28 uh, coil spring fork. The 28 uh, is the uh, stanchion diameter. The Trek Marlin uh, does a lot of adjustments for the different size bikes. And so when you're looking at the extra small um, frames, you are looking at about 80 millimeters of travel with the Suntour XCE 28s. And uh, depending on if you got the six or seven, um, the six has the XCT 30, which again is 80 millimeters of travel in the extra small. And then the Trek Marlin 7 uses the RockShox Judy fork. So as you get into uh, the size small and then even larger into the medium large, large, extra large, etc. Uh, you are looking at uh, 100 millimeters of travel and you're also looking at the 29 inch wheel. So if you get the extra small bike or small bike, uh, you are looking at 27 and a half inch wheels. So they do make these adjustments uh, for these different versions. So it's not just a uh, Here's the bike model, and here's the wheels and wheel sets and forks that you're going with it. The Trek has a lot of adjustability or variations of their models, even within the frame sizes. And that's what I think is really cool with that. what Trek's doing, is because it can fit a lot. So you're not just getting an extra large bike and still putting on these other uh, smaller components. And again, part of why I went with the Trek Marlin over getting my wife the GT Aggressor. Would the GT Aggressor have been perfect? Yes. <laughs> Does the Trek Marlin work? Yes. But this is just, uh, in this world, and in, in today's market, uh, this is what I had available. And I know things are starting to come back in stock and availability. So one thing I want to chat about in terms of upgrading and adjustability, because that's something I had talked about with the GT Aggressor a lot, as I did some upgrades uh, on that bike. And a lot of that was just, I mean, a lot of it was just comfort things. You know, I got um, new handlebars, new stem, uh, new grips, new pedals. And I had talked about uh, getting a new drivetrain, uh, replacing the rear cassette and going to a one by system and things like that. I did not end up doing that uh, before I passed that along to a family member. But one thing um, with these Trek Marlin bikes is that depending on the model you get, there is more room for adjustability and upgrading on your bike so if you want to get a bike see if you even like mountain biking see if you're going to be out here riding much and then if you are like hey man it'd be great to have uh, a more range in my in my gear set or a nicer fork on the rear hub which is where your cassette is uh, where all these gears are on the back on the trek marlin 4 you've got a six seven and eight speed freewheel which is important because you need to know that when you're trying to um, when you're trying to purchase a new cassette in the back they are different um, so a free wheel versus a free hub is what I'm referencing so this comes in a 3x7 but I could go up to only an 8 speed free wheel in the back uh, without changing out the, the hub um, so just by getting switching this out here I can go up to 8 speed only without switching out the hub. Now when you get into the Trek Marlin uh, 5, you have a 7 speed free hub. So now as you get into a free hub, you get a little bit more uh, flexibility with getting new gear sets, but you're still kind of stuck with some of these things. So this is why I reference wanting to get a Trek Marlin 6, because it gave us a lot more flexibility uh, for upgrades. And that's what I'm thinking. If, you, if you're looking for an entry level bike that gives you freedom for, for upgrading your bike, I would definitely at least at minimum get the Trek Marlin 6. Uh, because that your rear hub is a six bolt Shimano, but it's eight, nine, 10 uh, speed capability, like free hub. So you can get up to a 10 speed cassette in the back on your free hub 
uh, with your Trek Marlin 6. And I believe the 6 comes with the two uh, gears in the front. And that's easily adjusted too um, with your sets as well. So if you ever wanted to go to a 1x10. And with that, you can get a huge range with a, with a 10 speed and making it um, easier for climbing. You can get the larger uh, cassettes that go even up to like 50 tooth uh, cassettes. And the only thing different you'll need to do is just get a different derailleur uh, when you're doing that because you need to make sure your derailleur matches um, your cassette, your gears in the back. A Trek Marlin 4, which is what I'm actually here talking about, uh, is still fully capable as is. And we're about to take this through uh, actually a jump line out here at White Oak Mountain because just like in my uh, GT Aggressor review video, I believe that it's mostly the, the rider and not the bike. Now, I am riding a Santa Cruz 5010. I've been riding that bike for almost two years now, and I love it. It's a full suspension. It's a 27.5, 150 travel in the front, 130 in the back. And it is, uh, it's a, an amazing bike to ride. It's a huge upgrade from the GT Aggressor, even the Trek Marlin 4, uh, but that's almost a $3,000 bike. And I got that from a sponsor from the channel, uh, TJ21 Media Group, uh, who, who funded the bike for me to ride in my videos. And because of that, that is, that is the only reason why I have the Santa Cruz 5010. If I did not have that financial sponsor from them, I would not have purchased it because it would have been outside my budget and why I talk so much about the GT Aggressor um, being an excellent bike to still get you on the trails and still send it as much as you want. And we're about to take this Trek Marlin down this jump line through a couple other different features. You guys are going to see that first person on here and we're going to have a blast. We're going to just shred this bike. This is built, you know, bought for my wife so it's a just a little small for me we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna enjoy it and i'm gonna let you guys see coming to the capabilities of it if you guys have any questions anything that pops up any uh just concerns or maybe i missed something or maybe uh misspoke about something do reach out to me in the comments and let me know and just kind of ask and i'll be happy to help on that uh let's go on the trails let's get some riding and i'll give some more uh insights and feedback about how the bike feels along the way so one thing I didn't like about the Trek Marlin uh, in this is that the uh, it's a quick release, which is fine. Um, so it's not a dropper post, but the uh, I can only put the seat so far down. The seat post is just too long for me to make it any shorter. And so I like it to get out of the way when I'm going down like downhills or on jumps or things like that. And again, this is an entry level bike it's not really the intention was not for it to be designed for something like that um, but my gt aggressor i was able to push the seat down all the way down to the frame now i'm not gonna recommend you do this but i have actually cut the bottom of the seat post before to allow me to uh, push the seat further down into the frame but you got to be careful with where you're at because you won't be able to extend it as as high up if you need it for pedaling efficiency and if there's not enough seat post in the frame you lose the integrity there we're not going to do anything super crazy with this just going to hit a couple features Up here on top of the jump line. Just getting my catch up and a breather, forgot my water, but just kind of one thing I mentioned too. Some of the different bikes, they have shorter or longer stems. This is one of the longer stems for the Marlin series. And that's one thing I changed on my GT Aggressor. I shortened the stem, it allowed for more uh, tighter, closer you are to the stem the more uh, finer your adjustments are, but it's not so much like a round. I'm not like turning a big like steering wheel, like, like school bus steering wheel when I'm turning. It's very tight and controlled, but also it brings me back farther to the stem. It allows me to get my weight further back. So if I am doing a little bit more downhill stuff, or if I am jumping the bike often, having the stem uh, shorter, having the handlebars closer to your uh, that post here, 
And then I also like to have at least 20 mil of handlebar rise, if not more. But that's just like my own preference. Again, it's personal preference and comfort. That's why I talk about how I'm always changing out the handlebars. Even when I got my new Santa Cruz bike, I switched out handlebars. Uh, the stem I kept because it was already really short, but grips and pedals, those are the first things I switched out. And um, another common upgrade, especially with entry level bikes, are the tires. So these tires, yes, they're knobby, but they're super low profile. And when you're out here with some of this loose stuff, uh, you can wash out fairly easily. So those are all things that are very common. And in my mind, have nothing to do with changing the bike from stock or not stock, you know? And I know a lot of people kind of gave <laughs> some, had some different views on that with my GT Aggressor review, talking about putting on new tires and people are like, it's not even a GT Aggressor, it's not stock anymore. It's like, well, just look at your car. Like you switch out tires on your car when they go bad. You know, it's like, oh, well, I guess it's not stock anymore. You know, same thing with the drive chain. If I got a new chain because the chain was stretched, that's like changing your oil on, on your car. You're not, not changing necessarily the performance. It's just uh, when the oil goes bad, you change the oil. When your chain goes bad, you change the chain. You know, it's not like some people's mindset, I guess, on stock and not stock is, is odd. We are gonna hit this jump line. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. Um, this is the first time I've even been on this bike. It does feel a lot different, a little bit more compact, but we're just gonna test it out. And I'm gonna kind of share my thoughts along the way. It's definitely noisier. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the seat kind of bucked me, <laughs> hit me in the butt. As I mentioned, you can't get as low. These brake levers take up like my whole hand. I can't just use my one finger to brake. Ugh, almost had that. All right, here we go. We got some drops up here. Man, this bike is noisy. Sorry, I just felt. I'm gonna come back and hit this drop. Just kind of felt awkward back there and coming down on that first one. Just the bike feeling different. But we're just gonna show just kind of the, what we're doing. This bike can still hold me. I'm a 185 pound rider. So far doing all right. I did notice that hitting some of those jumps, I was going super slow just cause I didn't want to wash out with these tires. I hate this seat, how high it is. <laughs> this was mine. I'd probably crop this down a little bit more. Uh, all right, we're just gonna hit these two drops. Hopefully don't <laughs> screw any, knock myself out. Whoa, yeah, that seat just needs to get out of the way. I was definitely heavy on the front. I lost my pedals in the air, but I'm still out here. <laughs> I'm still hitting these features, so. Oh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, so let me just kind of walk you through what just happened. This is a step up. I was going pretty slow. As I'm coming around here, my back tire kind of hit here and with it being a hard tail, it's pretty rough. And it actually sent me, my feet are all over on these pedals. So as I come down, I'm kind of more top heavy and through here, it just kind of pushed me down and slid right up into this and I just couldn't get back because both my my feet were off the pedals and it was just kind of my, my butt just on the seat, just kind of crazy. But the whole time, I'll probably replay for you guys as I just, what I just shared. As I hit, come down, 
and it bucked me forward because I could actually feel myself being weightless, realizing I was no longer on the ground coming over the bike. And so some of that has to do with the stem. Sorry, I'm not, I don't mean to make excuses, but just kind of sharing just from my experience with other, with my Santa Cruz and before with my GT when I had it, this stem up here is forcing my body forward on the bike. And with this seat so high, when the back tire hits that, it then pushes this up right up into my butt and pushes me forward even more. And uh, luckily it was no big deal and I just kind of slid out to the side. Um, but those are things that can make a difference. Now this bike again is not designed for what I'm taking it through. This is what I have access to. So I'm trying to push it a little bit harder than what someone with this bike would. But this is giving you an idea of kind of the good and bad of this bike <laughs> and what it's doing here for you. You know, the uh, I was able to hit some of these other smaller stuff, but you kind of get an idea of where I'm at. You've already heard me talk about the long stem, but having this longer stem helps me keep my weight forward, weight on the front wheel, and just kind of more balanced for climbs, which is a better position to be in if you're mostly riding on the road or commuting in town. These tires are perfect for you. But if majority of your riding is gonna be on the dirt, you might wanna look at getting different tires. All that noise you hear is in the back with the chain. The fork is a little noisy, but it's primarily in the back with that chain. Nice, handled that area pretty nice. A little bit of chunky. Another little uh, jump right here. <laughs> it's crazy like how much of a difference just tires make. Nice. Getting through good. I would like to move the brake levers inside the handlebars a little bit more. As you can see, I got too many fingers on the brake levers. I need more more hand on the grips. You should only be braking with your one finger. But I just feel out of position just because of where the brake levers are when I do that. Again, many people wouldn't recognize that, especially if you are new to mountain biking. And there's just kind of an entry level bike for you. Like, hey, I want to get into it. These are things you don't really notice or you don't know. So hopefully I'll be able to give you some good feedback and information on some of that for you. Yeah, the biggest thing is just get out and ride. Don't let the bike hold you back from learning new skills. But if you feel like there are certain little features on there that might need to help you, like what I mentioned when I crashed, get that seat out of the way, drop it down, Get a dropper pose. I mean, not saying get a dropper pose, but find ways to get the seat lower out of the way. Having wider handlebars, getting the riser bars so you're more upright, can get your weight further back. You know, these are all things that can help you become better without spending thousands of dollars more. As I'm wrapping up here, throwing the bike on the rack, I do want to share with you guys just overall thoughts. And that is, if you are going to get the Trek Marlin bike, I would recommend to at least get the Marlin 6. If you are going to do any of the Marlins, I think it's $150 more from the Marlin 4 to the Marlin 6. Brings you around $650, I think. It could might be $670. Need to double check. 
obviously don't quote me on that, but it's around that range. The Marlin 6 would, the amount of money you're spending on that would be a huge improvement to your bike, not only at a base entry level, but for an entry level that allows for more upgrades in the down the road and in the future, if that's something you guys are interested in doing. And if you do plan on riding more on the trails and you do get better and your skills need to improve, which I would assume is the goal of everyone, uh, happiness comes from progression. And that's where I recommend the, the Marlin 6 over the Marlin 4. Uh, but this was actually fun. Got a crash in today and uh, haven't had one of those in a while, but it happens. If you guys enjoy this video, do like it. Uh, leave some comments in there on what your thoughts were. If you agreed with everything I said, awesome. Let me know and saying, yes, I second that. And if there's something you disagreed with or had questions about, leave those in the comments too, because I'd love to have this discussion. It's not like, I'm not here to be like the guru. What I say trumps everything, but I'm just giving you my experience. And I know the mountain biking community can be very, um, can be very harsh at times with, uh, if you're not riding a name brand three, four thousand dollar bike, you can really get um, shunned in a lot of environments. And I'm hoping to really kind of get people out of that mindset and just getting people on the trails and having fun. That's always been my, my goal. And that's how it was when I started. And I hope to continue to uh, share that mindset in the future with future riders and young riders who are following up behind us. Um, we need to be more smart with our finances and our money and our spending. And just because you can afford a hundred dollar payment on a bike, doesn't mean you should spend that on a bike. So anyways, another topic, another time, but uh, thanks for watching guys.